we recall that TBP is the parent structure when we have five electron pairs around a central atom and all five pairs are bonding pairs in the SEPR theory. For the case with four bonding pairs and one lone pair, we find the seesaw structure. The lone pair minimizes electron electron repulsion by occupying an equatorial position. One example of this structure would be selenium tetrafluoride, SeF4. Recall that it is impossible to have any TBP related structures if the central atom is in the first or second row of the periodic table since they are unable to expand the octet having only the 2s and 2p orbitals available so they are limited to eight electrons. The pair of dots on this particular model denote a lone pair. Now it looks like there's two sets here and that's just done so that we can see from any particular angle where we look we can actually see that there's a lone pair. So this is meant to denote just one lone pair at an equatorial position. When we do this the symmetry is reduced from D3H to C2V. So we can kind of see the seesaw goes along this way as a or sometimes called a teeter-totter. Keep in mind that the symmetry operations involve only atoms and not electron pairs. In point group assignment, we ignore the lone pairs. Now, for the case where we have three bonding pairs and two lone pairs, we find the T-shaped structure. Both lone pairs uh, occupy equatorial positions. One example of the T-shape would be the interhalogen compound iodine trichloride, ICL3. Ah, pity the fool. That forgets that three bonding pairs and two lone pairs lead to the T-shaped structure. For the case with two bonding pairs and three lone pairs, we find a linear structure. All three of the lone pairs occupy equatorial positions because that way they minimize electron-electron repulsion. One real-world example of this type of structure would be the triiodide ion, I3-1. Now, since it's a linear molecule, there are only two possible point groups to which this can belong. Uh, one would be D infinity H and the other possibility is C infinity V. Now because uh, we have a C2 axis if we were to turn it this way we would see that we would line up exactly as we did before since this C2 axis is perpendicular to the infinite rotation axis that goes along the uh, purple pipe cleaner this tells us that we have the group D infinity H. Now this brings up a point which I can show again that if we looked along the axis and we tried to do like a C3 rotation, we would see that it looks the same as before and we've lined up the lone pairs. But remember, we don't care about the lone pairs. The lone pairs are important. So we can make any type of rotation, an infinitesimal rotation, and the three atoms, the three purple atoms along the axis look exactly the same, they're unchanged. So for any type of rotation that we do, so we call this an infinite rotation axis, a C infinity axis. So this is uh, one of the important uh, features of linear molecules that they have this C infinity axis. With apologies to René Magritte, this brings us to the end of episode 10. Have a good one.